Okay. 13. 13 days. 13 days. They have 13 days off. We're live again. This is our third broadcast. <laughs> you guys let us know if you can hear us. We're having good combos, though. Did NYCFC win the third time that we were on, or they still lost? <laughs> <laughs> we're back yet again or, or we're here for the first time no one's on watching yet but once they start watching we'll know if we have sound or not um, so I'm not going to do intros until people are watching can you, do you hear us Andres? I hear you Andres blah 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 can blah blah, blah 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 that's the smartest thing he said all night ¿Qué estás haciendo? ¿Cómo? no bueno oh, nothing no hay nada. Okay. That's okay. We'll keep going. Oh, much better. Much, much better. better. Roddy says much better. So obviously we're, we're so good. DC oh can hear us. It's just Andreas can't hear us. We're good yet awesome. again. I dropped a Sharpie. We're good. So now we're going to start we everything all over no, again. No, we're not. No, we're just going to keep going. Okay. Screw it. You already know my face. I'm famous. Yes. Um, so we were talking about Pirlo, and we had both decided, and I agreed with you, Pirlo had a great game. Dropping dimes. Stretching the field. And, but we would all, now I can hear myself in my headphones. Yeah, but we're hearing ourselves on a delay. On a delay. That's awesome. Are we playing in another window? <laughs> Are we playing in another universe? That's so weird. <laughs> That's, uh, maybe it was Andres' microphone next to his phone. Um, anyways, but we would both wish, Ma uh, wish Max but you, but you made, you made, so really, made you, the point. Yeah, you yeah. made a really interesting point. I think that is a good point, that if you're going to drop a game of the next five games... This is the one to drop. And if you're going to rest guys, and if you're going to play carefully, this is the one to do that with, right? Western so, Conference team, away, right. cross country, right. plenty of rest time coming up. Right. So we have, play Pirlo you know, and let Maxi get on the pitch, but you're not, you're not counting on him. If, if Herrera he looks even remotely hurt, you take him out so that he can rest so he's, oh, yeah. so he's ready for the next match. Um, uh, I, I mean, that said, bringing in Briant for Herrera seemed like a bizarre move. Um, I, I didn't quite understand that. And as a sort of a side note, this kid uh, on Vancouver, Reyna, he's really good. Yeah, I will, and I'm sure we'll talk about really him in a minute. But I want to get to Oscar Martinez saying, a, me saying Pirlo had a great game is a good game as a stretch only because of his status. No, I believe he was the best passer on the field for either team, dropping dimes, stretching the field, something that really gave us the amount of opportunities we had in the first I, half. Yeah, I think he, I think he had a, I mean, he... he um, uh, he had vision. He could see. He, he was get. He was. He's, and people were looking for him. In addition to him looking for other players and being able to find other players, people were looking for him. So he was integral to the game. Unfortunately, you know, he didn't score. He had a couple of great opportunities to score, and he didn't. But he's not a scorer. Yeah. And la and last point on la last point on that. I think. I mean, even if you don't agree that Pirlo didn't have a good game or not, I I think that. You can say that with Herrera being such a great box-to-box -box midfielder as he has been in these recent games and Alex Ring being right. Alex Ring, they gave Pirlo an opportunity to do all the good things he yep. could do and covering up his mistakes. And that's right. why we saw when Herrera went down and got injured that this game really fell apart. Yep. And so I don't think that you can fault Pirlo for not fitting a certain system, blah, blah, blah. I just right. think that, you know, unfortunately that's how the cookie crumbled tonight. I would agree um, with that. So, so we do have... I, another star in the audience. By the way, I'm Trey Fillmore with Blue Balls. I'm with Martin Beal of Last Word on Soccer. Mike Anderer of Blue City Radio has set this whole thing up, and he's not going to be on I, well, he not is, much he tonight. Is there he is I'm, right there. Because I'm going to have to leave in a few minutes. But we are going to have – yeah, you should go home. Thank we, you. We Thank did, you for inviting me to go home. We do <laughs> have Andre Soto out there uh, from MICFC Nation. He's in the crowd saying something. What are you talking about? Yeah, so we have a question from Tony Larson here. Okay. All right, Tony. Tony Larson here. Friend of the pods. So we saw three substitutions. What did you think of each one? Were they what you wanted? What would you have changed? Great question. Oh, there's my pretty face. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. Martin, you start. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I like Frederic Briant, but I'm, I'm always worried when he comes in because I think that that means that uh, Vieira thinks that we can park the bus, and this is a team that has only one speed, and it's full speed ahead. So I don't uh, – uh, uh, him coming in for Herrera was concerning. Um, I would have liked maybe uh, Maxi to come in for Herrera at that point. Um, I think that um, – I, I thought R.J. Allen had a decent game, um, but I think that when – honestly, I think that when Vancouver brought Breck Shea out and they brought in um, Reyna, 
who's fa fast and extremely talented. I have a feeling that they brought uh, RJ out because they didn't think that he was going to maintain pace with him. Um, and then who else? Am I, who am I missing? Well, Max went in last. Uh, so Lopez went for in for low. Lopez went in for um, uh, RJ. Oh, right? sorry, yeah. Right, and I think I think uh, I think Mikey Lopez had a fine game. Um, he played well. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think he, you know, he was fine. Um, and then Maxi finally in for Pirlo. I thought that was a move that we were looking for at halftime, um, to, uh, because I think the team the team needed it. And I thought Maxi looked good. I think he looked a little rusty. A little, some he didn't have the quite the um, uh, connection uh, that uh, Via that he had with Via and Ring earlier in the season. But I think he looked good. We have we have a temp. Uh, I agree with most of that. We have a Templado <laughs> in the audience. That's good because I seek your approval. <laughs> yeah. So you might not recognize him without the drums. I recognize him. And the sticks. We got Elliot Mon over here who has a question regarding a very polarizing player in our team. Hello. Hello. Yo. Oh, yes. oh, no, don't give him the mic. Oh, my God. We'll never get it back. Uh, no. See, now I'm going to hog the mic and I'm not going to give it to him. Like, no. Now? Of course, now. Right? Actually, I have a drum in the back. I might just get it. <laughs> no, no. I thought you were just happy to see yeah. us. I am. I'm very happy to see you. Uh, Thank good, you so much for having Thanks for coming, me. man. Thank you very much. Um, so my question is, why was it that uh, they kept Pirlo on for so long when I feel that personally he wasn't helping out offensively? He had two opportunities for, in the second half, he had two opportunities for goal, and his first initial instinct was to pass the ball. And so, you know, what is Vieira thinking behind putting in Pirlo for so long? You know, that's, that's, my, that's my thought. That's a great question. And, and I think it goes into the conversation we were just having about the subs. And, and as we were just saying, Pirlo in the first half, uh, you know, more key passes and more solid passes than, uh, you know, almost any other player on the field. And he plays so well with both Herrera and Ring on the field. So we know that if Maxi goes down more, you know, we do have an option in Pirlo. Uh, but you're right. Pirlo is a player who's only scored one goal in the last two years. But you don't, you don't sign Pirlo to score and he's, goals. No, 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 I know, and, and I know, and that's fine. You should fine. know that. I, I do know that. I'm a number one Pirlo defender. <laughs> you should know that. But at the same time, that's good because you make a good defenders. point. We're playing, we're playing essentially from behind. If you're ahead by one on the road, you're playing as a tie, and when you're tied, you're playing from behind. And, and, and you need to I – blocked, I blocked the whole shot that whole time with my hand. Um, and and I, I think you make a great point. I mean, I don't know if Maxi would have been the great choice to put in immediately. I think that he is a player that – um, he's coming back from injury, and we're playing on turf, and he's slipping and sliding. And we saw what happened when we when we brought Madarita on too early from injury, and and that was unfortunate. Uh, but at the same time, we have players, especially when you're against a team with pace, or that you know at least has pace on one end with with uh, Vancouver. We have players like um, <laughs> we have players like Jonathan Lewis. We have players like Okoli. We have more attacking threats, and we could have moved players we've had. We've, played, we've had McNamara play the 10 before. We've had Jack Harrison play the 10. I think that those would have been solid options. Yeah. Maybe they were committed no matter what, win or lose, they were going to give Pirlo minutes. And I, I feel like I that also, might have been I mean, something. I also realistically, we didn't lose this game because of Pirlo, right? We lost it. No, no, I know. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. but in, sort of in the, big, in the bigger picture, we lost the game because for whatever reason, you know, Villa missed some sitters and Jack Harrison missed some sitters. And we gave away a goal in the first three minutes that we, we shouldn't have given away. I mean, that's why we lost. Um, Pirlo, I thought, had a decent game, but, and, and as I think, as, as, as what's his name over here said, if you're gonna play Pirlo, <laughs> this is the game that you play him in, right? I'm famous, people know me. Uh, that's why well, I didn't Chris, have to say who he was. So Chris makes a good, so, so Chris, uh, Chris, Chris that's we have Chris, lots of Chris's. Elegant. Anyways, thank you for the question, by yes, the way. Great question. And, and anyone who has and for giving us back the game, microphone. Anyone that has been to any game in the last three years right, knows your face. Yes. You have a question? No, Chris, Chris uh, made a good point listening. He was just here. I don't know where he is. He was, like, literally here, and now he's on Facebook. Uh, your mic's not on, so. It's not on. Now it's, it's on. on. Now it's on. Right. There we go. All right, we never mind, Chris. We'll get back to you later. Screw you, Chris. Good question from Oscar Martinez. What? Yo, the Spanish Ryan C. Chris just got me. But I want to know, what are we going to do with the uh, goalkeeper position? Because Johansson, yeah, well, with you want, Rose, what, this has uh, Do you no, want to see Andre Rawls? Wait, wait, wait. Let him finish I'm the question. I'm asking him a question. I, I, well, I guess I'm also, like, answering my own question at this point. But, like, Rawls, he has no experience um, in first team. But at the same time, Johansson isn't really showing us. Uh, he caught a ball. He was supposed to do his job, and he did it. 
But what do we do after this? It's like, what do we do versus Toronto um, the next, what, two Wednesdays from now? Yeah. yeah. What do we do? Yeah, well, but, it's a great but, question. But, Thank you so much, man. It is a great question. And, and obviously, Johansson's no Sean Johnson. Um, but the first goal is not Johansson's fault. And I would say that the second Last goal. Last goal, the third goal. The second the goal. The Reina goal wasn't his fault. I well, and I would say I the second so. goal is not his fault. Uh, because, no, because. He could have done a better job. He closed out the angle. Well, you're right. He closed out the angle. They attacked. From exactly the same, that goal was scored from exactly the same spot that they had shot, that Montero had shot from about two minutes earlier. So that, for some reason, the, d the defense was not defending. Well, yeah, that, I think that, that was Jack, and, and we can talk more about his game. Jack missed it, but also Jack's not a defender. There should have been some defender back there on that part of the field. And so obviously Vancouver figured out that that was an open space, and they sent, some, they sent one guy down the first time, and then they sent somebody down the second time, and the second time they scored a goal. So well, I think that, I think that, whether or not, I mean, he made a few, he made one or two great saves. And outside of that, yeah, I, I, I think visibly shaky. And he's still, this is only his second start of this season. And there is the question of, you know, his, after his first, his second and third start in MLS, we're giving up a total of seven goals against Toronto, who we're going to see uh, next. It's not, it's not promising, right? And then you do have Andre Rawls, and I know that we haven't seen him, and he is an undersized goalkeeper. But I've watched his tape a bajillion times. Of oh him. my God! Here we We've go. We've had this conversation before. We've uh, uh, that that he can be a great keeper. I mean, o outside of all of that, we get Sean Johnson back sooner than we think, and I think we'll be fine. I think we we can't complain about the level of quality we have at backup because we're better than we could be. We're back out to Andreas, I think. Are we? I don't my glasses on. Oh, uh, we are. We are. So sticking on the goalkeeping question or debate, oh, we have another one. Why is Sean Johnson in the men's national team when he has no playing time, when he can have a bigger impact with NYCFC? Great. Good question. That's a great question. Because Bruce Arena hates us. Yeah, so that's, a, so that's a great question that has two very easy answers. One, Bruce Arena doesn't care about <laughs> NYCFC. And two, if they get an injured player in a red card uh, at goalkeeping position in the, in the cup, you would rather have Sean Johnson playing for America there than here as opposed to a, someone that's not a goalkeeper for Team USA in this tournament. I mean, that's it. That's why. And I'm happy. Look, here's what's funny, though, is that, I mean, ideally some of the players he beat out is Osted, the keeper who, you know, won the game for Vancouver uh, or was a part of it. They were fighting for the same position. So it's kind of, I love living in that alternate reality where we have Sean Johnson and they don't have their keeper, Vancouver, and we win the game. But I think we should be happy for John jo Sean Johnson. At the end of the day, if you want to win MLS Cup, you know, you can throw away one or two of these games. Of course he would have a better impact here, but, but, but you have to think about Sean Johnson. He wants to represent his team, his country. He's a patriot. July, it's July 5th, so, you know. Wow. Okay, another question, Andreas. And also, yeah, technically U.S. soccer and MLS are not the same thing. They don't care. Andres, do you have another question? You're just you, holding the it, microphone like it's a melting ice cream cone. Or are you just doing a, you just doing a sort of a Statue of Liberty thing? He's off now. He's just conversing. Which player on the A team? Mike's talking to us. Did you not see that you wanted to see? Which player on the A team did we not see that we wanted to see? I don't know if that's the right question. I mean, I think we have so much talent in the A team. In the A team? He was in the A team. Yeah, that's it. You want to see on the pitch. Oh, see on the pitch? Right. I won't go ahead. No, no, I don't have an answer. Well, I, yeah, I think, I mean, I answered my own question. I would, have, I would have seen, I would have liked to sing with Herrera out a player who would have as much presence on the 18 uh, okay, yard so that's, box. So that's an interesting, okay, so that's an interesting scenario. Herrera goes out. Instead of bring, bringing in Briand, right, which would then sort of pushed Cheneau up into some sort of defensive midfielder role where he was not, obviously not comfortable and he had Briand in the back line, which was not working out. What if instead they had, they had brought in Jonathan Lewis and just sort of gone all out in terms of attack, right? So, so what does that do to your, you still have the same, you still have the same back line. Mike is making this even more complicated by moving the microphone around while I'm talking. Um, and where do you put Jonathan Lewis? That, that, that sort of plays Vancouver's game against them by, by, by being very aggressive and, and attacking. 
I, I think that's true, but I think that's our strength, and I think you need to play to your strengths, when, especially when you're on the road. Uh, two questions from, or comments from Facebook. Uh, same Chris says... Now we can hear you and they don't want to? No. <laughs> uh, everyone wants to hear me, mm. but um, we won't have a chance at the top two seeds, which of course are precious seeds in MLS Cup. Uh, if we if we throw away too many games like this, we're already down seven points if Chicago wins tonight. That's a good point, but the season is still very long. Uh, Seattle was in, what, eighth place? At the, you know, or ninth place? We'll be fine. I'm not too concerned about our positioning. There's so much separation between three and four right now. I think we'll be okay. Also, um, also think about what happened last year. The two teams that finished at the top of the division... Um, I got knocked out quick. Yes, right away. So maybe that's not, not an advantage. And I mean, that's normally not, not the case. But at the same time, you know, I, I think we can be confident in the performances won, we have the, had. Who won the cup last year? I just, I, that's, that's a crapshoot. No, um, no, no. Seattle won. Aware, and, I know. and who won the cup before that? Portland. Who also had to fight their way all the way through. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, So, maybe. I mean, yeah. But, you, but it's true. But I'd rather not deal with hopeful, hoping that you catch on fire the second half of the season in the playoffs than being steady for the whole year. But... Talking about being steady, uh, Michael Allen, shout out Michael Allen, Blue York One. Uh, he's, they, he says, we seem to lose to the teams we should beat, RSL, Vancouver, D.C. Is there an approach to the game that we're not having? Is it a mental thing? Um, yes. Next. <laughs> um, look, this was obviously a game we lost because of mentality. We had the talent. We, had, we have the manager. We have the, we have the best players on paper. We were coming in from a, a win streak. Uh, mentally, they should be in a place that they should have won this game. Uh, do you know wh at what moment for you that they fell apart mentally? Well, I mean, I'm just thinking about th those three games, and those are three th those three games that he, has, he cited there, and they're very different kinds of games, right? Um, and I and I keep coming back to the fact that you know, as I've said before, when Rodney Wallace is on the pitch, the whole front line functions differently. When John Johnson is on the pitch, the whole back line functions differently. And I think those are extremely important. You know, it's a different kind of team. It, I think that if we had those guys on the, on the, on the starting 11, this, is, this game is not even in question, right? Because I think Rodney Wallace plays a physical game and he can go right down Breck Shea's throat. And oh, I think Sean Johnson doesn't let balls get away from him. And I think the back line is less worried about Sean Johnson than they are about Eric Johansson. So it's, I don't know that they're, that they're, just because they're all losses, that you can sort of compare all three of them, right? Well, I think the confusion when Herrera got injured, I think the confusion when he got subbed out and the defensive markings for the next corner leading to that goal where they drew, I think that, I think I that think had that, a lot, I think that was mentally the point I where think that's part of it, it but I think apart. the point you were making, which is like, you know, in the first few minutes of the game, Vancouver pressed us, and then they fell back, and by falling back, they allowed us to get back into the game. In the second half, they came yeah. out and they said, screw it, what do we have to lose? We'll just press these guys So the again, whole, that's a mental game. thing, though. Yeah, but that's not, and then that, on top of the Herrera thing, I think makes the second half what the second half was. Uh, an update, Chicago finished their game tied 2-2, two to two, so now we are not seven points back from first. Hello. What's how, up, Mike? How are you taking, advantage, taking credit for that? That's, you look like you were taking credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> We got Andres again? Uh, do you have a question or are you just waiting oh, at I us? I can't hear you. Okay. Is he on test? Oh. Hear yeah, me now? On. Yeah, cool. So we got one question. You may have answered this already, but what's the question? What's your name, bro? My name is Claudio, and my question is, why did it take so long for Maxi to come to the, to the pitch? Because he has very short legs, and it takes a long time for him to get <laughs> to the pitch. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Thank you. Oh, Martin. <laughs> Leave, yes. <laughs> uh, good, <laughs> good question outside of his bad joke. Oh, um, really? Thank you, Claudio. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I, we kind of touched this. Uh, Maxi, uh, you know, he's coming off from... Claudio? I said Claudio. I th we think the reason Maxi didn't come on... We, we all wanted Maxi to come on earlier, maybe even start, but the guy's coming off of an injury... And this is a game that if you're going to lose one of the next five games, this is the game to lose. So, and you're playing on whatever that is, recycled human waste that they have at the BC oh, place up uh -huh, there. Uh -huh. So I, I think that they were just sort of protecting him wanted, him, wanted him to get some minutes. They should be very happy with how he played, I think, um, except for that uh, elbow that I think was at Chani or uh, Waston sort of gave him like a minute onto the pitch. Well, I think we saw at the same time, I mean, we saw at the same time we saw Madarita get kind of rushed back into a role. I mean, role, when we didn't need him necessarily. I mean, in the times we rushed him in, I mean, it was just to try to force him into the lineup, not necessarily just to give him minutes. And we saw what happened. He aggravated, 
he re-aggravated the injury against the Red Bulls, and he did it yet again more seriously uh, in the last game. And I think they were just learning from that mistake. Yeah. Mike was telling you something. Uh, but then he ran away. Mike, Mike was telling the bartender he wasn't done with his beer. <laughs> Yeah, well, Jurgen Klinsmann got fired, so I don't know if Wait, they're... <laughs> say that again. That if, so, so Jurgen Klinsmann used to say that if you're, if you're in the 18 or 11, 18, that you should be able to play 90 minutes. Oh. That's garbage. We saw David Villa at the end of that game, but he didn't have the legs to finish that game. We, and there were two moments, I think, that were indicative, right? Uh, or I, I would say, yeah, the, the two moments that stood out to me were you had him running for a loose ball and a breakaway, and he couldn't find the pace to separate from the defender. And it was clear that he was running as hard as he could and was just slower than usual. And secondly, we saw uh, a pass that he was trying to make uh, into the box, and it was just his legs were so heavy. And that's what happens when you can't play 90 minutes. They just left. And I think that's, we had a short week. They were traveling across the country. He's a little older. And so, like, uh, I, I, and I don't expect players to be 90 minutes fit uh, anyways. Uh, okay, we yeah, got Andres yeah. yet again, our man in yes, the field. Yes, 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 yes. So we got another question from Teresita, which is? Assuming Pirlo leaving at the end of the season, who would, what position would fill in? Okay, I'll take it. Nice. I like it. Anything to not talk about this game, to be honest, because <laughs> we're all set. Thank you, Teresita. Thanks for the question. Um, okay, let's say Pirlo leaves as a DP. I mean, uh, it's kind of up in the air because we don't know what's going to happen with Maxi because he's on a loan to buy deal and um, he what? is a DP. But isn't Iniesta supposed to come next year? Huh? Isn't Iniesta supposed to come next year? Oh, Iniesta supposed to come next year? I don't know. I don't know if we're going to keep buying old midfielders. Um, look, we've seen teams that spend money on DP defenders, and sometimes it's turned out, but for the most part, it hasn't. When like Columbus and some, I mean, some other teams, I don't know. You don't normally see it. I don't think we'll do it on a goalkeeper, even though you do see that be successful, I mean, in Colorado, and I think Guzan's going to be a good addition to Atlanta, too. I don't think we need a goalkeeper. We have Sean Johnson long term. Uh, Assuming David Villa is here for at least, you know, one or two more years, I think you... He signed you, an extension, didn't he? I think a good... Yeah. I think a, a great box-to-box -box midfielder would be great. I don't know how long we're going to keep Young Hell. I don't think he's going to be here that long at all. Yeah. I think a player like him would be great because I think we're going to give Ring at least a pay raise once Mix's contract is off the books. And um, a, yeah, a I'm kind of more, one. I'm kind of more concerned about I, Young Hell Herrera. I mean, I, I want that kid to stick around um, because I think that with him, Maxi, Ring in the midfield... With, with Harrison slipping in as you need him to or McNamara slipping in as you need him, that's a nice, strong team. Yeah. Um, well, I'm concerned about paying Ring because I think someone else will pay him. He's bouncing back from a bad season, and I think someone else is going to pay him. Somebody in Europe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ring? Yeah, he'll go back to Germany in a minute. But So that's why I think we need to pay him and pay him down with our T-A-M, as they call it. Yeah? How we doing? We're doing great. <laughs> Mike looks happy. Well... On that happy note, I got a roll. Oh, you got to leave? Yep, I got a long drive. Where's home. Andres? So who wants Come to over here. Andres, or you want to jump in? Right. Y'all well, got... Thanks, guys. It's been fun. Y'all got T-shirts with your podcast name on it. I don't. You coming up here? Our podcast, we're low budget. <laughs> and, and people don't wear T-shirts that say blue balls on them, I promise you. Then look. I'll cover my chest for you. Yeah, we all have blue balls after this loss. You can download and subscribe on iTunes. Hey, I got a new mate. I'm popping. Do you hear pop? Oh, I'm good I, I now. Hear, yeah. All right. Uh, I got Andreas Emilio Soto, a.k.a. Uh, what's your nickname? I have no nickname. Yeah, oh, you do. Oh, yeah, El, Patron. Yeah. El Patron is with me right here. Andres, what's up? How are you doing? I'm pretty good. A lot of good interaction from the crowd here at Ryan's Daughter. So Great crowd. They here. stuck around. They the they crowd stuck around. Stuck yeah, around. Yeah, it's like 1 a.m. Yeah. You guys are still here. It actually is. <laughs> <laughs> a loud can we go from the audience. <laughs> That's okay. We're glad you guys stayed as long as you did. Yeah, knowing that we have at least four or five templados here, it might be all night. That's fine. Yeah. I'll take it. I'm going to get a drink after you. this. <laughs> what, are, what are some of your thoughts uh, in general? Well, I think the second half, uh, a lot too. I'm sorry, what's your name? Steve. Steve. Uh, 
a lot of the, a lot of the decision making in Vieira, maybe he outcoached himself, as Steve said to me before we asked the question, was why did Brion come in so early? Was he looking to hold off that 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 win with the two one win? Why didn't we have more of an offensive front in the second half? And then when we tied, we still looked slow, and it took a long time for Vieira to react to to offensive substitutions that Vancouver have. So I think at the end of the day, if you want to blame Vieira, whatever, at the end of the day, the players have to play. Um, it, it just sucked. I was hoping to come out with a, a tie, and we came out with a loss. So do we lose one point? or We lost three points. We lost three points. I, I guess, think, right? bro. Yeah. Uh, Steve. Well, well, I, I think I think first of all we lost two points because we blew that fucking draw. If we're gonna no, watch that, your man. mouth. Ooh, sorry, sorry. No, we're fine. Nobody heard that. Mike says we're fine. Nobody heard that. Yeah. So, so we we, we blew that. This is a late night edition. I guess we can right, curse now. Right. Hi, ladies. Um, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so, all right, so, Steve, so, keep talking. All right, so we blew we blew that draw uh, in, at, at, towards the end there. Um, I, I I think that the, the choice of substitutes was was misplaced on two of the three. I think bringing Maxi in towards the end was the only good one, in my opinion. Um, I don't think RJ was doing that poorly. I don't think Chano should have been moved up. I think that had you brought in Lewis and moved Jack into that spot that Herrera was occupying, Jack, you know, we, this whole team, the, one of the main philosophies of this team is defending from the front, and Jack does, I feel, does a very good job of that. And I think that if you put him in in that, that role that Herrera was playing, where it's somewhat of an attacking midfield role, somewhat of a helping in the box-to-box, -box, covering for Pirlo's somewhat deficiencies, then you put him in, you put Lewis, who is fresh legs, strong attacking on the right wing, we could, might have had a better chance at scoring more throughout that game. Or holding Great on point. to the ball. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for joining us tonight. And, 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 and for, for making it okay for you guys to curse. <laughs> yeah, apparently now. You've, you've, you've been the watershed moment. Um, who picks up a good point? Because you can see slowly our... Yeah, I don't know what that sound is. You hear it? You can see slowly our offense just Thanks, taking man. a step back. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Oh, that was the end of your sentence. Yeah, I know that. You could just. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know how many. I mean, there's like so many things that we can beat over the head a lot. I, it's so hard to do the job of Patrick Vieira, and we all know that. I think it's going to be. I think the question that he has to answer is every time that we've parked the bus. Outside of last time I remember it working effectively is Portland of last year away. But ever since then, every time he's tried to play three center backs, it really has not worked. Every time we park the bus, the bus gets stolen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so so it, it, it's a curious question. Because, like, of, of course, like, the reason it's called parking the bus is because it's happened so many times and it's been effective in the world of soccer that it's an idea and a, and a philosophy to have. But at this time, it, it's obviously not working. And, and the idea that Chano and Mikey Lopez are switching positions off and on, like, I, 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 it's not something that's ever happened. And when you're t t tied 2-2 two to two, and even worse, b down 3-2 to two with 10 minutes left, these are things that you can't. These are experiments that you can't afford to take, you know, in, in games that are this close that you have this much of, a, uh, of control on. So I don't know. Mike, there's like some weird buzzing in the headphones. I kind of like sure it. I'm sure it's fine. I like it. You like I, it? I like it. It's like that. It's like. I, I just like it. It's I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. We'll make it work. The show continues. The show continues anyway. Uh, but I think you're right. Like you park the bus at a certain time, not at the 65th minute. Yeah, right. You know? Wasn't it was before that? It was when Young Hell got hurt. It was like in so. The do we know anything about his injury? From we d now? oh, we've been we've been here. I don't know. Do we have a man on the field? Crispy, where are you at? Crispy, where are you at? You're in San Diego. Or you were watching. San you're Jose. awake. We know you're working on this. Anyone? Anybody know anything about? I've got zero text Herrera? about it. Okay, Twitter? we've got no report on Herrera. Okay. We'll we'll go to the field if we get something well, else. I need a beer. Bartender. Don't forget to can tip you the bartender. A, can you give me a Corona light? <laughs> can I get a Corona light? Thank you. If you don't have one, I'll take any light beer. Thank you. <laughs> so you really like Coronas? Huh? You really like Coronas? It's like a thing with me watching soccer. I grew up with Latinos, you know? We got to watch. So you go to Coronas. We got we to gotta drink Coronas. And we would watch, you Not know. Not the, the we, would watch, the we would watch Boca. Do we have anything else? Roddy thinks that. What time is it? We've been going for 30 minutes About now 30. on this one, outside of, like, the whatever throwaways. Uh, let me know. 
Any, let's, let's go to the crowd one more time. My, uh, so, uh, any questions? Oh, yeah, we're pretty much dead. <laughs> we're dead. We're tired. Final thoughts. Okay. Si I got one. All right. We, Steve's got another one. Thank God. Keeping us alive because we're tired. I'm probably going to drink more after this is over. I'm having one more. Steve got something else. I mean, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> well, can we look at to, uh, Toronto? I don't think that's not the point of this game, this, so, this show. While, 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 as you just said, not looking forward to Toronto, we do have our four, possibly four of our toughest matches of the year coming up right now. It's Toronto at home, Chicago at home, Toronto away, then the Red Bulls at home. And the Red Bulls, even though they're not having a phenomenal season right now, it's always a rough match, you know, it, just because of the emotions that run high. Um, not that this make game was really indicative of what this team is capable of, but what is your prognosis for this extremely rough stretch? We're coming off of a two-week break. Historically, we don't do phenomenal coming off of a long break. What, what, how do you see, what is the prognosis for you guys for, for this stretch? Great question. Think about that. And I think I want to rephrase that in the same light, just to be a good closing question for this podcast, as what, what do you think we learned of, from this match going forward that we can use going forward? I think – you asking me now? Yes, I'm okay, asking cool. you, the know. only other person with a giant orange microphone. Don't start Pirlo. Garbage. Pirlo's amazing. No Pirlo, no Rion. Well, I think the big question is Herrera. Because obviously when he came off the field, sure. we didn't know what to do after that. Kind of like when Moxie came off the field against the Red Bulls the first time, our team went to shits. And right now with Herrera, it's oh, like... Oh, we can curse now. What goes on? Well, we said we could. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, so I think to answer your question, Steve, is one, we need to see who we have available. Because if Sean Johnson is back, if Herrera is healthy, obviously we're not going to have Matarita. But if Maxi Morales can play a full game, I think we can see our normal team coming off of a bye, if you want to quote American football. Um, and I think those three players are key to our, to our performance. Ring didn't have a good game today. Um, he was off. Um, oddly enough that the, the citizen's keyword was Lord of the Ring, and he didn't perform today. <laughs> but that's my opinion. We need to see who we have, and I, I feel confident coming off the bye. That, that's my opinion. I know it's a four, a long four-game stretch, but I, I feel good coming off the bye. I think it's going to be uh, – uh a huge challenge, right? Because now we're playing Toronto, then Chicago, and then Toronto away, and then Red Bulls at home. Um, and those are four not easy matches for this team. I think they need to take some – I think they need to go into the next game with the confidence that we do have one of the best back lines in this game. And that that, that, that loss was not, was not a paper loss. That was a mentality loss. It was an away loss. And, 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 and they need to get back into winning ways. The reason why all of those goals happen were because of turnovers, especially in the midfield. And I think if you get Herrera back healthy and you have Maxi Morales, who's one of the most protective midfielders this league has seen this season, then you're not going to have those mistakes that you saw and you're not going to have uh, the turnovers that happen. Pirlo was not the cause of many of those turnovers, but at the same time, I think Maxi's very protective of the ball. And I think that... You can be – and against teams like Toronto, the, the, the chances that you limit, you'll be fine. And most importantly, we had 18 shots, I believe, maybe a little more, and only five shots on goal. You have to convert chances no matter what. I mean, this was a three-phases game, right? D defense didn't good, do good tracking in the second and third goal. Midfield gave up opportunities, which led to those three goals, and the offense did not convert those chances. And, again, when you see three phases falling through and the fourth phase, if you want to count Johansson, then you get – well, a, a, a mentality loss, and that's unfortunate. My my final thought of the night is Mike. Mike from man, Boosted Radio. The Mike. He gets the last We're word only of here the night. Of you, well, so. no, I mean, you guys, you guys are going to finish it off. But but Andres brought up a good point. Herrera. Wait, can, can I hear that again? Herrera was struggling towards the end of the first half. You you saw him getting angry. You saw some 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 issues with his mentality, and and was he going to lose control? He, he got injured five minutes or t six minutes into the, into the second half, and it's the second game, because you referenced the Red Bull game in the Open Cup, that Vieira has proven that he can't respond to an injury or a, ch a drastic change in his lineup in a, you know, 
with, with his substitutions because Herrera comes off, he's got two minutes to make that decision. What do I do next? And he brings in a, a defender. And, that, and that's one of the challenges that I saw. So your thoughts on can Vieira, if Vieira is going to be considered one of the best coaches in MLS, you know, he can't continue to make decisions like that. I know the Open Cup game is not technically an MLS game, Still but he can't make those decisions. Uh, I don't know if I have an answer to that because Patrick Vieira doesn't. <laughs> so it's, it's – um, that is the question, right, of the evening. And, uh, and, and it's come up a, a few times. You have to credit Vieira for what he's done with this team and, and for what he's done for creating a system and bringing in players and making them adhere to a system and making it work and why we're so much better than we have been the last two years. There is a problem. It doesn't happen often where – the game gets under his skin and under the skin of the players, and they can't make the adjustments they need to make and the substitutions they need to make. And I think that was uh, one of the main storylines of this game. I, th I don't know if we have an answer. And I think, I, I mean, I don't have an answer, and we will after the Toronto game. The team that beat us twice in the playoffs, away and at home, embarrassed us. We didn't score once, and we're one of the highest scoring teams last season and this season. So that's really what it's all going to come down to. And, and, and so it's not to cop out the end of this little show with a fake answer, but... Uh, it's, it's how do they bounce back is the biggest thing coming out of this game. So my, my quick two cents is uh, Matarita got hurt in, well, like the third minute. So we have answers for, or Patrick has answers for defensive-wise. So if one of our left backs, center backs get hurt, we know what to do. The question is, which Mikey just said, in the midfield, if Ring for some reason goes out, if, or maybe who puts in uh, Mikey Lopez, but if Young El Herrera or Jack Harrison or Rodney Wallace, God forbid, gets hurt again. That's where we don't have depth. We don't have I think players. we have depth. I think we didn't use I don't it. We think don't he use has right trust during. depth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust. Yeah. We'll see. We shall see. What lightning round question because we got it on Facebook. Roddy Russell, listener to all of our pods, I think. Do we bring someone in this summer in what position? Uh, well, that was actually Teresita's question. Um, if kind we do of. bring someone into the summer, and I'm assuming a designated player, Roddy. Um, no, no, no. No? No, just any, a, player? any player. Any position. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm assuming Pirlo's not going to be with us. Pirlo will be with us, always. In our hearts. In our hearts. <laughs> uh, I would say we need someone to support Via up top as an attacking forward. That's my position. You don't think Okoli cuts it as an impact sub? I say no. I say we don't bring in anyone. I think we're fine. <laughs> I, I, I think we're... Oh, we're, my God, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. Uh, I think we're, we, have, we actually have more depth than people sometimes give us credit for. Um, I, think, I think having an effective, an effective backup for ring would be nice. Um, we have backups for ring, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they're phenomenal. Mikey I, Lopez. Mikey Lopez. God bless him. I, so much energy... Not enough control. That's a great, so that's a great, I love that. That's a great, that's a great point. Thank you, Steve. Brilliant. We don't have depth in box-to-box -box midfielders. That's it. I mean, eh, and that's what we've built this whole team around and what we tried to with Mix too. so I don't know. Uh, but is there, can we find one? I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think we, we, we might be able to find one. I don't know. I, again, we have one of the best scouting networks in the world, so maybe we can find someone. I don't know really what's going on around the league as far as who's available, but I, 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 I think the talent is out there. We just have to scout it out. Well, yeah, and that's what I think about my dating life. Let's finish this, so, this little uh, post-game live show right now. Firstly, yeah, before we finish, thank you to Ryan's daughter. Thank you, Ryan's daughter. Thanks for having us. And wonderful Carlsberg and, beer. Yeah, and Carlsberg. They're not paying me, so I'm not going to say their name on this show. Um, <laughs> they're not paying us. We wish we won. More people would have stuck around. But we still had fun. Yeah. And, and it was great to have all these guys here. It's great to see you. Come back let's, uh, let's plug ourselves. Well, Martin Beal on Last Word on Soccer. He's M-A-R-T-I-N-B-I-H-L, and he's been on all of our shows. Uh, we have three podcasts of the Pod Luminati right here. There we go. We've got uh, Mike a, from... Pernage Mike from Blue City Radio. Uh, we've got Andreas from NYCFC Nation podcast. Uh, what? <laughs> Just keep going. And you have me, one half of Blue Balls podcast. Um, so follow us all. Subscribe. Do what you want to do if you want to hear more. City, po uh, City Post Game Live. Follow us. Follow this show, City PGL, on Twitter so you can find out when we're going to do our next ones. And you can uh, follow and like uh, Blue York One on Facebook. Subscribe on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. And then you'll definitely know when we go live. Go home, get to bed. 
Uh, yeah, go home, guys. It's almost 1 a.m. Get home safe. And I have work, too. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. We love you. Bye. Oh, that was the blue balls, that